So a couple of weeks back, I posted a video where I not only installed Windows 11 on my Steam Deck, I actually went a step further and installed a debloated version of Windows 11 called Tiny 11. Now, after I did this, I got tons of comments from people saying, you know, Shane, that's not actually the most stripped down version, the fastest version of Windows 11. And I was pointed towards this thing here, which is... I believe it's called something like Ghost Spectre Windows 11. It's weird to me that the name is not like super clearly placed on it somewhere, but it's something like that Ghost Spectre Windows 11. Apparently it is the most stripped down, slimmest version of Windows 11. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to actually download it. We're going to install it. We're going to go through the setup process and kind of get the thing up and running and let you know what that process is like on the Steam Deck. This is not going to be a review of this quite yet, right? This is just going to be the process of getting it running on the Steam Deck. So link in the description to ghostcloud.ml. We're going to scroll down, update number 10, click on the media fire link. You've got a download link here. Click on that and it's going to then run you through a countdown where eventually you'll be able to actually download the file. Once the file is downloaded, it was a little bit strange because it was in a zip file, but the zip file was a .10x file. Didn't know what to do with that. I just changed it to a .zip and then I extracted it with WinRAR. Now it did ask for a password. Basically the name up to the number 10 appears to be the password for extracting this. Once that was completed, I then got this .iso file. Now we're going to use something called Rufus to put this ISO onto a flash drive. So let's go ahead and download Rufus. We're going to go back to our download folder now and let's run this. We're going to use a 32 gig card that I already used for things like this. Let's select our ISO. And none of this other stuff should need to be changed. Let's just click on start. If you get this Windows experience stuff here popping up, I don't actually think you need to do any of this. I think that this Spectre thing should take care of this stuff. I'm gonna turn it off. It's gonna erase everything on the flash drive. Yep, that's fine. Yep, multiple partitions. Gonna delete those too, because I've already done something kind of like this. Yep, that's fine. So we're just gonna delete the partitions and throw the stuff onto the drive now. So from here, I'm gonna be using a dock from JSOX to kind of make this stuff easier. Let's plug the newly created flash drive installer into the back of the dock. We'll drop our Steam Deck likewise into the dock. And a lot of this should be displayed on an external monitor up above it, which we'll be looking at here in a moment. If I'm not mistaken, you're gonna hold down volume up and then hit your power button until you hear the beep and it should boot into like a boot manager screen. It's either up or down. It was up. Okay, that's great to see. So we'll zoom in here just a little bit and you can see here boot manager. We're going to go over and click on that and then you should see your flash drive was on the list. So we're going to click on that as well and this should take us into the setup for this uh, what is meant to be the most stripped down version of Windows on the planet. Okay, and as you can see, we are turned sideways, and the reason for that is because this monitor, this the, the panel on the Steam Deck is actually oriented that direction, and then it is rotated with software. So this is not uh, that weird. It's going to make things a little bit difficult because we're turned sideways, but that is what is going to happen. It looks like there's a little menu there to the side, and I'm wondering if that's what I'm meant to be interacting with now. And of course, using the, the trackpad over here is horribly difficult because the monitor is rotated, but the controls are not. So that is pretty rough. So it looks like we have uh, setup windows or windows setup, explorer, start menu, and then power. So we're going to click on the setup button here and see if this gets going. Okay, so we are in a now fairly familiar setup situation. Let's click on next, which is great because you can actually just use uh, the touch screen. So at this point, we're met with a screen where it's asking us what version we want to install. So there was compact, compact plus def. Def means Windows Defender. So anytime you see plus def, it means with Windows Defender. I'm reading the rest. Super light with, with or without def, and then super light SE with or without def. So what we have here, super light says this version already tweaked and etc. for advanced users suitable for gaming and streaming compact, untouched, no tweaking, just removing the apps. 
It does not mention SE, but I did some Googling, and it sounds like SE like adds some cool additional stuff. So I think we're going to go with the lightest possible one with the coolest features. We're going to go with the SE version, no Windows Defender, and proceed from there. Okay, so here we are. We're going to go with Super Light SE, and let's hit Next. And this should take us to a screen here in a moment where we can kind of delete our partitions and do all that stuff. Uh, let's do custom install. There are all of our partitions. So if you're coming from uh, Steam OS, you're going to have to delete all these partitions. You're just going to click on one, click on delete, click the next one, delete, until you have one drive of unallocated space, and then you can click on next. And it should begin just installing it from here. So we'll pick up once this is, that was very, very fast. Oh my Lord, that was quick. All right, let's pick up when this is now, which shouldn't be very much longer. Okay, so we've hit the point now where it is actually rebooting. So theoretically, we should be booting into Windows now to complete the setup process. And from here, we're gonna kind of pick things up filming on that external monitor. It'll just be easier to see what's going on and I'm not gonna be dealing with the sideways screen. I will show you how to fix the sideways screen though in just a moment. So you can see here, getting ready. Okay, so it looks like we actually had a second reboot after the getting ready thing. We went black and the Steam Deck has started over again. Hopefully this time we're actually low. Okay, yep, something is definitely beginning to occur. Blue screen. At this point, I would recommend that you have a mouse and keyboard plugged in because you're gonna need to type this in. And I don't actually know if the on-screen keyboard would have popped up at this point, but you can see you're just an administrator. So you're gonna type in whatever pin or password you want. I'm gonna see if it'll allow me to just. So at this point, I tried to type in a, I was gonna try to type in like a pin, like a four digit pin or something like that, but my keyboard for some reason just was not functioning. So I tried to push a button on the Steam Deck controller and it just bypassed through this. So I just don't have a password set at all. So as you saw there, we saw the desktop for just a brief second, and then we jumped into this screen here. So I'm not exactly sure what's going on at this moment. Please wait. We'll just take their advice and we'll wait. All right, here it says restart required. Your PC will restart in a few seconds. But as you can see here, before this occurs, we are in uh, Windows, and we are now restarting. Lots of text, very, very fast text. <laughs> Let's see what happens when we reboot. Hopefully we're actually in the OS and we're done very soon. Okay, we are back in. Do you want the net speed monitor toolbar on your taskbar? I don't know what that is, but maybe I do. We'll try it. So it looks like here we're able to select our network interface, which it's got several different things, and then click on save down here at the bottom. I'm not sure what exactly that did. Oh, I see. It's basically giving like the throughput of your network down there on the taskbar. That is interesting. So one thing that I'm dealing with here is that my mouse is working, but my keyboard for some reason is not, and I'm not exactly sure why that is. So I know from here that there's pretty much like supposed to be almost nothing installed on this computer like at all. Let's go to uninstall programs. Good Lord, that is it. That is the only stuff that is on this computer. Let's go and open up our file browser and let's just look at many. So we're using, we have 49 gigs free of a 56 gig drive. And of course we can unplug, unplug, I should say, the flash drive that we were running on. So very little is being taken up. But there's this thing here, Ghost Toolbox. And I believe this is what you can use. You can see the animations and stuff that have been tweaked to make things faster. I believe you're meant to use this to kind of tweak what pre-installed apps that you have on here. Maybe there's some things that you want. Found a new update you want to download standalone now. Sure, why not? Unable to launch Edge. Well, we don't have Edge installed. So what we're going to have to do then is we use this to install things. So we want Microsoft Edge. So we're going to type in 12 and hit enter. Download uh, edge one two three four okay so we're just gonna do the stable release we're gonna type in one and then enter so this should install <laughs> edge for us so we're gonna go through this process and install a handful of things with this uh, neat little program and then we'll, we'll go from there so at this point I've installed a few things and I'm currently like installing the official drivers and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to uh, 
get all this stuff fixed. After I installed the APU driver, the screen on the Steam Deck turned on and we rotated this way on the external monitor. So I'm gonna show you the external monitor because the process will be the same on both. Let's go to display settings. And what we're going to do in this instance, if you're, if you're only using the Steam Deck monitor, you can ignore part of this. What we're gonna do is we're gonna change this from duplicating to extend so that now we have the internal monitor doing what it's doing, keep changes, and then the second monitor, you know, being what it should be. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna try and drag this to the other window so that I can interact with it easier. And for the number one here, which is the internal monitor, what we're gonna do is we are going to change it to landscape. And that should have us in a much better place now. If you're using two monitors, at this point you can also kind of orient things the way that they are. So my instance one is below number two. So let's apply and that will allow me to drag a monitor down, or a, a window I should say, from one to the other. All right, so I took the time to get everything kind of set up and installed. I went ahead and I installed Steam Deck tools, which you can see are functioning down here below. Although I'm having one small issue, the RTSS, the server that runs some of this stuff, doesn't seem to um, always want to start on a reboot. So let me turn that on really quickly. And I'll also demonstrate when I do this, another small problem. When I open up the keyboard, it's not really the keyboard that you want. There may be a better way to um, get the better touch keyboard working. But for right now, I've not managed to figure that out quite yet. So let's get that running. See, so it says start with Windows turned on, but for some reason, it's just, it's not the, uh, it's not wanting to do that. But at any rate, all that stuff is working. For the most part, things are working okay. I do want to show that if you uh, right click on the taskbar and click on properties, you get the start all back configuration. And you can use this to make the taskbar look all manner of different ways. As you can see, I've just kind of reverted to the Windows 11 style, which I, I prefer. I also do want to show that I've managed to uh, install the Xbox app just fine. Of course, Steam is installed. We're going to go and launch Sons of the Forest, and I'll show you, you know, how that's functioning as well really quickly. Like I said, this is not going to be seen as a review, um, just sort of the installation and then sort of a proof of concept. So this is the first time booting Sons of the Forest. And just to make things easier for you to see, I'm going to be using a dusty <laughs> Xbox controller. So let's turn that on Bluetooth, obviously working, installed all the drivers for this directly from Valve and all that stuff went just fine. So let's turn the volume down a bit. We'll go to single player and we'll actually uh, load into the last time I played this game. So this should work quite well. All right, so here we are in the game. Now, I don't want you to look too closely at the performance here, okay? All I've done is put this on ultra low, but I'm sure that there's things I could 100% do to help improve the performance of this. And like I said, this is not a review. This is just showing the installation. We'll look at the performance later on in another video. We're still sitting close to 30 FPS for the most part here in Sons of the Forest. Pretty good dip there as I was swinging the thing. But everything is working fine. And of course, I could also use the uh, the controls on the Steam Deck itself. Everything's going to work just fine that way as well. By turning on uh, dynamic resolution there, now we're up into the mid-30s. I saw 40 there for a second, I believe, or at least high 30s. So that, that stabilized things quite a bit. At this point, I'd say this game is actually nearing playability. So I think that, you know, with some tweaks, this thing can be pretty decent. I do want to take a second, and while this game is running, let's take a look at the task manager because I want to take a second here and let's look at what we've got going on. Even with this game running, we're at 55% CPU. GPU is pretty much maxed out, which is what you would expect. And the RAM, we're using 9.7 gigabytes of RAM. Let's actually close out of Sons of the Forest. And let's see what kind of RAM drop we get down to just sitting here sort of idling. So we're down to 3.3, 3.3 gigs of RAM. Let's exit out of Steam. Let's quit Xbox. Let's close Edge as well. I mean, lots of stuff we're running there in the background. And now we're getting down to about 2.6 gigs of RAM being used. Now, I do have Steam Deck tools and all of that stuff running, but that stuff is kind of necessary for this stuff to properly work. But we've settled out at 2.6 gigs, and we're looking at 
total processes is 136. But again, I've gone in and I've reinstalled some necessary things like the Xbox app and the things that are going to go along with that. You could have it lower than it even is now. Overall, honestly, setup wasn't too bad. Their little command line app made it pretty easy to get everything installed that you wanted to have installed. If you want to see a review, full performance review of this, subscribe, drop me a comment to let me know you actually want to see it. And if I get enough, I'll go through the work to actually put that video together. Guys, I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friend.